Hi everyone, it's Susie. Welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for tuning in. This video is an unboxing of a five pound repurposed jewelry box from Goodwill Blue Box. Yeah, you heard me correct. Goodwill Blue Box. And it came from Nashville, Tennessee. So it's been a while. They are available Friday evenings only on goodwillbluebox.com and at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, they go fast. I was able to get one. It's been a while. Um, I think they were $44.99 and then either six, six or seven, maybe seven dollars to ship. So let's take a look at what Tennessee sent. There's first looks, very colorful. Oh, I see something blingy over here. This looks like a leather bracelet. Here's a big hammered medallion. Okay. Let's uh, pour it out. Oh, there's a ring. Pour it out onto this tray. Huge honker. Wow. Okay, let's go over what the what I got. So here it is, separated. These are all bracelets. I have to say, there's really many memory wire bracelets that are quite nice. This bin is filled with necklaces. Uh, there's going to be craft in here. And here is a bin of single earrings, brooches, oh, some pears, I hope, and uh, craft items. So let's begin. Okay, let's start off with all those memory wire bracelets that I mentioned before. There are seven. So the first one is this. <laughs> it has these little skulls in them. Glass beads, acrylic beads. These are the black seed beads. So that's number one. Number two is very special. There are chips of fluorite, an amethyst, a turtle charm, along with some mother of pearl, and there are some um, turquoise tone beads too. This one is very nice. Oh, there's also clear quartz. Number three is made up of these AB coated cubes, faceted beads, along with silver tone beads, and this beautiful deep purple faceted bead. And one large bead, enamel, with some pink flowers. Very nice. This is number three. Number four has a very sweet beachy theme to it. There's a gold tone charm of a starfish that has rhinestones. Look at these frosted beads. There's like a little clear polka dots running throughout it. Iridescent beads, glass, gold tone beads, faceted beads, really very sweet oh there's another charm in there that looks like a, hmm, maybe an ocean scene 
So we have this one, number four. Number five, silver tone components along with these black seed beads and skulls. Three, in fact, three silver tone skulls. Then you have these. Um, hmm, they do feel cold. There's also purple beads right there throughout. Very interesting. This is number five. Number six. This has a very nice southwestern feel to it. Look at the charm that's hanging off of it. There's also wooden beads. Those cylinders are wood. Uh, acrylic beads and I believe some, some stone. There's also gold stone. A really nice combination of colors. This is number six. Number seven is actually two. Two bracelets. Multicolor, beautiful colors of seed beads and also faceted beads some cylinders, some saucers, a little bit of everything. So these will be um, sold as a set. I actually thought it was one. And then when I picked it up, oh, they're two separate ones. So this will be number seven. Yeah, wow. <laughs> this here is a really awesome necklace with feathers now most of the time i'm not keen on feathers but when i saw this and laid it out i didn't mind it it is pretty spectacular it is on this textured gold tone link necklace there is a, a lobster claw at the end uh, it looks like um, this extender was added because it is a different uh, shade. It's brighter than the actual chain. You have these beautiful flowers below that. And then hanging off each of the flowers are these suede tassels that have these cluster of faceted acrylic beads in like this uh, light brown tone and clear and they alternate and each one of these clusters are holding one or two feathers beautiful brown feathers this one oh the tassels are suede and they alternate in color as well so the clear beads have white suede um, strings I guess cords and then you have this, you have that. Each one does have a feather. Oh, except for this one. This one doesn't have one. Hmm. And then continuing on around the necklace. So let me measure the drop before I pick this up. It's about eight and a half inches in drop making this a 17-inch uh, necklace. And then you do have uh, maybe a two and a half inch. Oh, okay, I'll measure it. Uh, it is about two and a half inches uh, on the extender piece. Okay, let's pick it up. Looking at it, everything looks to be intact. And well, except for this, uh, what did I mention down here? This one, this cord here is missing a feather. Yeah, that's where the feather would go. I'll look in the box to see if there's any feathers. <laughs> but th these are the feathers. And let me show you the construction on the back. Each one of those flowers 
have a felt backing. And look how clean that is. So, picture wearing this. I kind of like it a lot. All right, so yeah. Oh, what's this? How did I miss that? Okay, there's a cluster of beads missing from here as well. So what you could do is remove this strap altogether, but uh, I hope someone um, likes this as and, and would wear it because I think it's really, really a fun piece. So we have this one. Okay, let's look at some necklaces. First off, <laughs> look at this. Look at the size. This is a pendant that is, I would say, little less than four inches long. It has this textured gold tone frame. It is acrylic, I believe. It is large. It is double-sided. It is on a long, slinky snake chain that has this type of closure. A clip. Looking at it, I don't see any name. The jump ring is around the neck of the pendant, and then it on the back side it's connected like so. Let's measure this chain. And it is approximately 14 inches long, making it a 28 inch necklace. And then you have this huge, huge pendant. That is unusual. <laughs> so yes, we have that. Next up is another very long necklace. That is the chain. It does have a lobster claw clasp, an extender with a bead at the end. It's holding this faux pearl that has a gold striping design going around the middle and this beautiful multi-chain tassel. This here is filled with rhinestones and um, they look to be all there. There's no maker's mark on this either. So let's measure the drop on this one. This one has, oh, this drop is about 14 and a half inches. So that's a 29 inch necklace with this long of an extender and this here comes in at about ooh, four and a half inches so we have that one next we have this I guess this is worn around your neck, maybe? Or is this a headband? Hmm. It has this design. And there is discoloration. And then you have these three ovals, but you know what? I wonder if there were any gems in here. I don't see any glue residue. But it is quite tarnished. Look at that absolutely nothing stamped inside measuring this around 
it's 12 inches and then this portion is about five inches so i'm not really sure what it is what do you think let's grab the magnet it is not magnetic so i guess we'll test this at the end uh but tell me what do you think this is i i have i have no clue so we have this uh unusual piece next we have this beautiful necklace polished silver tone look at the back it's immaculate and it's signed right there it says Napier with the copyright and it also says it on the clasp. There's a fold over clasp. This measures in at 16 inches and it's so nice. Um, I will show a photo next of me wearing it. 16 inches, I still had some uh, room. I mean, it wasn't choking me, but I have to say it is such a beautiful necklace and it does have some weight. So this is by Napier. Nice find in this box. The last necklace in this group is a silver tone. I don't know. It kind of gives me like that popcorn um, feeling. It is lightweight. It is hollow. That is how it's finished off. Let's measure this one. This has a drop of approximately nine inches, maybe a little less. So we have this slinky one. Next up, let's go over these necklaces. The first one I have here is this vintage triple strand acrylic bead necklace. They look like nuggets in this deep burnt, like orange tone. There are brass tone uh, bead spacers. This is how it's finished off. You have these gold tone bars. I see some string hanging out off of uh, this strand on top. It is marked on the on the hook and it says Hong Kong. So with these type of necklaces, they tend to be uh, pretty short. So let's see, let's put that aside. That extender, hmm, you know what? Let's uh, let's see the full length. So if I do it that way and measure it like so, I would say it comes to about eight inches. So we have we have this one, and I want to make mention after looking at the uh, beads, this whole portion looks pretty nice. I don't see any. Um, coating loss but as I move around the back I notice some right there but the fact that these beads have like these color variations it's um it's not too noticeable right there and um and you let's see where else um, maybe right there. But then again, there's spots like dimples. So it's not, it's not too noticeable. So we have this one, very unique, vintage signed Hong Kong necklace. The next necklace, uh, these are glass beads and they kind of remind me of a honeycomb pattern. There are frosted pink beads uh, in between. And looking at the back, I think, well, 
I know this is missing the middle strand. So instead of being a triple strand necklace, this is only a double strand. So still looks nice. It's silver tone on the back side. There is a lobster claw on this one. A nice long extender with that frosted pink faceted bead on the end. Looks like a paper clip style almost um, extender. So yeah, unfortunately it's missing a strand. So let's um, let's measure this one and see what the drop is. So put that aside. Let's put that in the center here. Uh, there is an extender on this one and the drop comes to seven and a half inches approximately, but you do have room to lengthen it. So we have this. So because they're glass, there's um, some weight to it, but you know, nothing, nothing very heavy. Just unique beads. And they can easily, easily be repurposed too. So we have that. The next necklace is gold tone and it has these beautiful blue roses. As well as these enamel flowers. You even have that gold leaf. Look how detailed and nice, nicely designed this is. There are glass rhinestones throughout. Really, I have to say this is quite, quite a lovely necklace. Uh, there is a very enlarged lobster claw clasp. There's these preset loops here. One, two, three, five and a jewelry tag. That says Amrita Singh. Now, Amrita Singh was founded in 2003, so that makes this company uh, 20 years old. Uh, it's They make one of a kind uh, collections inspired by Indian royalty um, from the 18th century, combining like old world charm with new world uh, aesthetics. It's based here in New York City in what we call the uh, area called NoHo, which is north of Houston Street. And her pieces appeared in um, Vogue and Cosmopolitan, Women's Wear Daily, O Magazine, Marie Claire, uh, Glamour, In Style, the Black Book, uh, W Magazine, and her jewelry has been worn by many celebrities. Uh, Kate Upton, Anne Hathaway, Blake Lively, uh, Jennifer Lopez, Sophia Vergara, uh, Jessica Simpson, even Kim Kardashian, and, of, and uh, Katie Holmes. The jewelry is sold in Neiman Marcus, at Macy's, at uh, Holt Renfew, and um, many other boutiques worldwide. Now, if you go to her website, amritasing.com, you'll be shocked because there are necklaces that cost $100,000, $90,000, Seventy-five thousand uh, dollars. I guess, um, yeah, it, it that's the jewelry that's um, worn on the uh, runway or the red carpet. And this here, this is costume, but it's beautiful. So check out her website. Just wanted to mention that the jewelry on there is extremely expensive and um, I guess this is most likely from her 
early days when she made more costume jewelry. So let's take this off. Let me show you the back again. Let me show you the back of the necklace. This is in great condition. You see all those um, openings on the back of each one of these flowers. And this is solid. Let's place that down and measure the drop of this. Um, Amrita Singh, I'm wondering if she is also the same Amrita Singh actress. Um, Indian actress. I, I'm not sure. I don't know. But let's see what this measures in at. Oh, seven and a half inches approximately, give or take. And then you do have the preset loops on the extender. So here we have Amrita Singh. Beautiful blue rose and white flower. No, ivory. I would say that's ivory. Now, this is definitely a statement necklace and all the rhinestones are intact. Still more to come in this Goodwill Blue Box unboxing. Uh, I think I'm going to wrap up part one at this point. Uh, I guess these would be the next things that I show and then more... Um, well, I didn't show the craft items yet. And there were brooches so and rings. So that will be in part two. And look at this pendant. That's a beautiful dragon filled with beautiful rhinestones all around it. That's a pendant. All right. So I hope you enjoyed part one. If you did, please press that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free. Choose all notifications when you ring that bell. That way you'll be alerted when I post part two. Comment below. And if there's anything you would like to purchase, all you need to do is email me at dragonflybees at gmail.com. The instructions are at the end of the video. And they're also below in the description box. If anything sells, I'll create a sold list. And it would be a pinned comment in the comment section below the video. I can hold items uh, until part two is posted. I normally um, post two videos per week every Sunday at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time and every Tuesday at the same time. And then I would invoice and ship towards the latter part of the week. Uh, just so you know. In the meantime, thanks everyone. Oh, I think there's going to be a testing section um, after this. I believe there were a couple things I needed to test in part one. Uh, so if you want to see that, stick around. If not, I will see you real soon. Thanks everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm.